This week in episode 448 of the RV Podcast, we talk about AI and how it can be used to plan a camping trip. We uncover the top issues real RVers are talking about this week. We talk about the right and the wrong way to empty your RV's black tank. And we share the latest RV news. All this and more coming up in this week's RV Podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion, Jennifer. And we're accompanied today by our dog, Bo, the magic elk hound, who is here <laughs> at the someplace. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see him back there, but he is indeed here somewhere. <laughs> and I'm sure you will hear him <laughs> at yes. some point. Yes, there'll be some noise, some creature that he'll see out the window, and Bo will let you know that he's here. Been a busy week for us. We've been on the road. We've been to Elkhart, Indiana. We've been to Dayton, Ohio. This week we head to Southeast Michigan for a couple nights of camping, uh, then down to Tennessee uh, for a, a week or so, and uh, then back getting ready for our our big Michigan meetup uh, on the shores of Lake Huron. That is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. June 19th to the 22nd. And I think you were able to get a couple more spots. We did. We did. So if anybody wants to join us, what are there, three spots that we you were have, able to get? We've got three more spots that we can fill. Uh, and if you're interested in that, just go to team at rvlifestyle.com and we'll, we'll tell you what's involved. But we're really excited about this. We've got some great sponsors, some great uh, prizes, The Dirt, uh, Harvest Host, uh, OB Organizer. Um, we've got uh, RV uh, uh, prizes coming from Keystone RV, uh, Leisure Travel Van. Um, gosh, I'm probably missing a couple in there too, but lots of great prizes and uh, we love having these, uh, these meetups. So that's coming up. And again, if you want information, you can go to team at rvlifestyle.com and send us a note. Uh, so that should be really fun. More Ride is a sponsor. That's one I missed to talk about. Battleborn Batteries, and I mentioned them. Uh, we've got so many awesome sponsors who are helping us with uh, giveaways and gifts, and it's going to be really a lot of fun. Uh, and we, we should tell them about our latest blog. I think we announced it last week, but it's really, uh, it's really taken off. And we're excited because it's about eating, and everybody <laughs> needs to eat. Everybody likes to eat. And what do we get the most questions about? I think even, you know, I think we get more questions about food than we even do about places to go. Yes, uh, it's uh, campingfoodrecipes.com. In just a minute, you'll meet uh, Jerrica, who is our editor, and she'll talk about it. But uh, check it out if you haven't, campingfoodrecipes.com. We are going to have a lot of fun with that blog. And it seems like Jerrica has got a lot of recipes themed Memorial Day. Yes, she's going to talk about uh, some really cool things that we've got. The blog is really neat, and I hope that you guys jump in because you can also contribute your recipes to it. Uh, food, it's a big deal, big part of a camping trip. Uh, social media RV buzz. Man, we have had a lot of it this week. Our uh, Facebook RV Lifestyle Group continues to grow, and of course it's a uh, height now as we're beginning of the camping season, and people have lots of questions, lots of comments, lots of hot topics, and uh, Wendy Boyer is uh, kind of our uh, social media guru over on the RV Lifestyle Facebook group, and here's what uh, has been happening this week. Hi, Mike and Jen. It's been a busy week over at the RV Lifestyle Facebook group and one post had over a thousand people commenting. That may be a new record for us. So what was the post? Well, it was from Mike and Mike wrote, I noticed a lot of people are selling their homes to live in an RV. Why? Well, as you can imagine, he had lots of wonderful responses. They included things like it's an affordable way to travel, there's uh, the, you're waking up to a constant adventure. Uh, another person said, you can get back to the basics, have less stuff and uh, more life experience. And perhaps my favorite post of all came from Michelle. And she said she chose the RV lifestyle because life is short and this country is large and amazing. I have to agree with you on that, Michelle. Next, I'd like to share a post from Nicole. 
Nicole is shopping for an RV and she knows what she wants. She wants one that's about 30 feet long and what her question was was should she get a class A or should she get a class C? She wanted the group's opinions and she got hundreds of responses. So to kind of sum up what people were saying, those who were in the Camp A group said that if you go with an A, you will get one that has more storage, more inside living space, higher ceilings, and they said there's nothing that can beat that really big, wide um, window so you can see better when you're driving down the road. And those who like the Class C option said it's easier to get in and out of, and it's easier also to get serviced at a, maybe an automobile, automotive uh, dealer because it's more like the, a van. And they also said you could choose a gas option with a Class C, which might save you some money on fuel costs. So lots to consider. But perhaps the best response came from Remy, who said, Michelle, maybe you need to uh, try to rent one of each and then just see which one you like better. Good advice. And then finally, the last thing I'd like to share with you is another bug post. I don't know what it is with the bug post, but they really get people talking. Um, and this one is from Trish. And Trish said, Moth, Miller moths. Any Colorado folks know how to kill them in my camper? Hundreds of them. And then she shared this video of what looked like 100 moths swarming inside her RV bathroom, just this tiny space. And it was really awful. And I know I wasn't the only one who thought that way um, because Terry said it was horrifying. And so uh, the group once again came to her help. Lots of great suggestions. Vacuum was a really um, popular th thing people suggested. Um, and others like Joanna, they said, why don't you get a large bowl of water, put some dish soap in it, shine a light on it, and then the moss will be attracted to the light, go into the soapy water, and that will take care of them. But it sounds like um, these moss are going to be around if you are in Colorado or planning to go there soon. You might want to prepare for them. The experts suggest turning off your lights outside your camper. And the good news is they won't be there forever. We're talking maybe another week or so. So hang in there. And that's it for me this week. I'm Wendy Boyer, and I'll see you over at the RV Lifestyle Facebook group. You know, it's always fun to hear what everybody's talking about. But the one comment that I remember is somebody saying that uh, life is short and the country is large and amazing. It is. It's so true. reason to get out there and travel. Yep, in our uh, small houses, but we got a big yard when we're out there traveling in our RVs. All right, it's time now for uh, this new feature we're going to do called the RV Camp recipe of the week and it is from our new blog campingfoodrecipes.com Jerrica Ma is the foodie outdoor enthusiast and the editor of campingfoodrecipes.com and she's got a timely couple of recipes to share especially as Memorial Day heads up and everybody hits that first big camp out of the season here's Jerrica Hi, Mike and Jennifer and Camping Foodies. This is Jerrica with CampingFoodRecipes.com. And this week I have two campfire treats ready for you for Memorial Day weekend. The first one is the Patriot Biscuit Cup, um, which does require a special tool to make, but uh, many campers already have this tool. Um, it's called the Wolfham Stick. And um, what it is, it's basically like a marshmallow roasting stick, but it has this cup at the end that you can wrap biscuit dough around. And when you cook it over the fire, it makes these really tasty little cups that you can then fill with any of your favorite fillings. And so we've made one for, um, for Memorial Day weekend with some red, white, and blue ingredients that are really tasty. And you can check that out at campingfoodrecipes.com. But if you don't have this tool, don't worry, because we also have the All-American S'mores, which is just a really easy, fun twist on the traditional s'mores. Um, kids especially like to make it because it involves sprinkles. And there's also plenty of other recipes for Memorial Day weekend. Um, we got, you know, of course, burgers and special hot dog recipes like hot dog sauce or Chicago-style hot dogs, um, leftover hamburger casserole, all kinds of things ready to go for Memorial Day weekend. Um, so again, that's just campingfoodrecipes.com. But our team also wanted to invite you um, to join us in honoring the National Moment of Silence. And what that is is that on Memorial Day, wherever you are at 3 p.m. local time, 
we just pause and we take a minute of silence to remember our soldiers who have fallen for our country um, and just to um, take that time to show gratitude for their sacrifice. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend with your family and friends and I'll see you next week with another camping food recipe. You know those Patriot biscuit cups sound pretty good. I think we're going to have to try those. I'm all for trying good <laughs> camping food. All right when we come back our RV interview of the week we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and how it can be used to plan a camping trip, so stay with us. The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know, over the years, we've tried many and found them all wanting until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply, it's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-sized Aurora Lux medium firm mattress that arrived tightly rolled in a box. All we had to do is put it on the bed, unroll it, and wait for it to recover from the compression. Then we put the sheets and the bed covers on and we found we slept so well on it that we ordered another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. Our sleep is now so luxurious and deep that we can't imagine using a different mattress. Shipping is free, and if you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourselves to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Brooklyn Bedding sends out all of their RV mattresses from their own factory in Arizona. That means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the cost. And right now, if you visit rvmattress.com slash RV lifestyle, you'll get the maximum discount off your mattress with the promo code RV lifestyle. Again, use the promo code RV lifestyle for a big discount on your RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. We're sure you'll be as thrilled with your RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding as we are with ours. It really is the most comfortable mattress we've ever slept on. Welcome back, and now it's time for the interview of the week, and this one is certainly timely. It's in the news these days. It sure is. Uh, the debate about artificial intelligence, um, you know, using a computer to do things that humans would do, be it writing or painting or making photographs or images, uh, um, solving problems that require human reasoning. Well, today on the uh, podcast, we're gonna talk about a company that is using this new technology, bringing AI into the RV world. Our guest is Scott Lengel, and he is the CEO of a new company, a startup called Adventure Genie. And to our knowledge, it's the first RV planning program, trip planning program, powered by artificial intelligence. Uh, they have a database of about um, 25,000 public and private campgrounds. It's probably more than that. That's what it was when I talked to them a week or so ago. And it pairs that with some AI-based algorithms. That's the big talk in AI that um, takes trip planning to um, a, a minute details that you can control. Uh, this uh, company just went live the 1st of May and it was co-founded by Scott. Scott's a former Microsoft senior technology executive, uh, along with David Greenberg, who is their chairman, both, um, uh, he's a veteran uh, investor. Uh, they're RVs, they, uh, they love to camp. Uh, Scott and his wife, Lisa, camp in a Newmar Ventana. And Scott is our guest this week to talk about uh, his new uh, company, AdventureGenie.com, uh, and more importantly to us, I think, how artificial intelligence can plan the perfect camping trip. Well, Scott joins us right now. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Scott. Thanks, Mike. You know, we have heard so much and continue every day to hear so much about AI and much of the spin that we hear in the uh, non-RV uh, uh, community is, is negative about AI, but there's a lot of positive things. And I I think what you guys are doing with Adventure Genie is well worth sharing with our, our uh, audience. Let's start by just sort of explaining how Adventure Genie can simplify the RV trip planning process. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So we look at Adventure Genie as kind of AI meets travel planning. 
And we've all used these travel planners. In fact, we probably have a whole bunch of them, whether we're search as an RVer, whether we're searching for campgrounds or searching for things to do or places to stay or routes, optimal routes to get there. And we probably all have a set of applications on our phone. We have different websites open and we're trying to sift and sort and bring it all together. That's where AI really shines. And we believe that with Adventure Genie, we kind of make it magical. So as, as we, we're kind of new to RV, we've only been doing it for about two or three years. But when we started, we, found, we expected that we'd find something like TripAdvisor or Expedia for the RVer, where you'd have an all-in-one solution that would guide you through the, the planning process. And sadly, we didn't. We found that you know there's a sea of applications and lots of data all over the place. And that's where AI really, really, really shines. So what we do is the more that we learn about you as an individual RVer or a couple or a group and you and your pets, the more that we learn about you and what you like and what you dislike and your preferences and your must haves, we can customize a trip for you. It really boils down to three key things. What do you want to do? How do you want to get there? And where are you going to stay? And we have three major components of Adventure Genie that helps you with each one of those. Well, talk a little bit about how we would use it. Once we've logged on, and we'll put some, for those of them watching the video version of the podcast, we'll put some screen grabs. And of course, we'll link to Adventure Genie on uh, the show notes in the description. But uh, walk through how you use it uh, now, or, or, and you maybe want to say how you used to have to find these and how uh, AI is helping you through Adventure Genie plan these same trips. Right. So the typical use case is, you know, a lot of people that are RVing go to the same place every year. They might be snowbirds. They have their location. They might own a place. They might rent a place that they're, that's very consistent for them. We're looking at a different type of use case. We're looking at the explorer, the adventurer, that wants to try out different experiences. And that's not to say that people that have a more permanent location also don't, don't bop around. We know that's pretty common too. So when you're in the bop around mode, the first thing you might do is say, what are the things out there? What would, what would be, a, where would be a nice location or a group of places to go that would be very RV friendly that follow a particular theme? For instance, you might say, I want to follow the bourbon trail or I want to follow the NASCAR circuit, or I want to go to the mountains of Utah or the beaches of the Southeast. Usually on, on these adventures, people are following a particular theme for a particular trip. Doesn't mean you can't mix and match and mash them up any way that you want. But we, the first thing we do is we provide users with what we call genie trips. And they're well-defined itineraries that follow a particular theme and a region of the country. So, for instance, it might be the national parks of the Southwest. And we'd have a genie trip that says, well, good, good trip that follows that theme and location would be the big five national parks of Utah. So you might start in Moab and go to Arches and Canyonlands and then maybe to Capitol Reef and Zion and Bryce. And we suggest that you spend two days at this location, three here. We suggest the order to take them. And we suggest the route, the most optimal route. And of course, we also make suggestions of the things to do. So that's kind of the entry point is when you're in browse mode, let me find a cool trip that's following a particular thing. After you do that, when you find something that you like, you say, take this trip. And then we move you into our trip planner. And the trip planner is a whole nother world of opportunities. So we know that you've, and we'll ask you, well, where do you want to start? But because it's AI, we're going to know more, of, we'll know plenty about you. So we'll know generally, like I live in Bluffton, South Carolina. So um, by default, my trips would start in Bluffton. But now I need to get out to Utah to go see these five national parks out in Utah. So again, through AI, because of what our software knows about me as a user, it's going to know the route that I generally like to take. It may know that 
if I'm going west, I might like to take a more northerly route. And if I'm coming home, I might want to take a more southerly route. It might know that on uh, when I'm going to a destination that I'd, I'd like to kind of stay close to the to the freeways. I don't really care too much about where I'm staying, easy on, easy off. But when I get there, I have a particular preference. I might like to stay in state parks. I might like something a little bit more luxurious, but it's going to know the types of campgrounds that I would like. It might know that when I'm coming home, I got a power home. When Whereas on the way out there, I might have been comfortable with driving 300 miles a day, but on the way home, it knows I got to get back to work and family or whatever, and I'm willing to drive 500 miles a day. So that's where AI starts to work its way in there. The things that it knows about the user, how they like to drive, the way they like to drive, where they like to stay, their um, amenities. And one key point on as we're building that trip for you, and of course, Mike, you'd always have the ability to tweak it. We just make suggestions. We make recommendations. You may choose to take them or you may choose to modify them. But one key thing that we do is we create these things called genie stops. So if I'm starting in Bluffton and I'm going out to Utah, we know it's going to take several days to get there. So it will, our software will create uh, genie stops along the way using information we know about you, about the route, how, how long you like to drive. So we'll recommend locations to stop along the way to get you out there. Now, this data, uh, Scott, that it gets from uh, from you when you sign up for the program, or does it learn as you program in a few trips and remember what you said the last one, uh, or does it go out and grab the available data from you that's already out there on the Internet? Uh, help us understand where it gets this data from. Right. That is a fantastic question. So in an ideal world, down the road, we're never going to have to ask you any questions. We'll just know enough about you, but we don't, especially for- That's a little user. scary. I got to say, that's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, but still. <laughs> it's, it, it's, a little, it's a little scary and there has to be a trust factor. And of course, we have all the appropriate security in place that we're not going to share any information and you could read it all sure. in the terms and conditions and so forth. Um, but it is, I mean, it's eye-opening. Uh, it, you could kind of look at it like the Netflix model. Uh, I'm sure many of your viewers and listeners are familiar with Netflix. The more that they're watching episodes and movies and shows, the more Netflix is going to learn about what they like and what they don't like. So we will we'll do something similar. Now, to seed the system, because of course, we don't know anything about you, Mike, the first time you come in. And we don't. We don't find it out there on the internet or anywhere else. We just know nothing about you. We're going to ask you a few questions and we're going to have to learn by you telling us your preferences. That's just to get us started. The way we learn over time is we kind of pay attention to what you're doing in the system. So if when you're searching for campgrounds, we see that you're always looking for 30 amp and water and sewer. If you're frequently looking for pet friendly and, and, and doggy parks, the more that you filter as you're looking for stuff, the more we'll learn about you. The more that the more eyeball time that you put on a campground, the more we'll learn about you. Oh, Mike's been looking at these campgrounds for an average of 15 seconds. Others, he quickly dismisses. The ones that you're looking at for a longer period of time, we will then, through machine learning, pull that together and say, what do those campgrounds have in common? And we'll make it easier for you. We'll just know. And that's kind of the way Netflix works. We'll just know based on your browsing habits, based on which campgrounds you add to your trips, based on which trips you take, based on how you're browsing and you're filtering and so forth. We'll learn more and more about you. Now, I see already on the site there are uh, some points of interest uh, that are besides campgrounds, and you can you can add your favorites, whether you want to go into a state park or a national forest or a kind of a resort campground. Yeah. What about you know stopping at a at a Cracker Barrel for uh, yeah. an overnight, or 
yeah. finding uh, uh, quirky little things like the giant ball of string along the road. <laughs> Will you be adding those kinds of features that people, you know, hey, before you pass this thing, you might want to look at this little community because it's got a museum all about jello, like up in state, yeah. upstate New York has. Yes. Something yes. like that? Yes. That ball of twine is everybody's favorite, by the way. But yes, thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Um, by the way, we're a new company. We're a new kid on the block. Uh, we're a startup. We released as of the time of this taping just a couple of weeks ago. And um, our POIs come in a variety of flavors. Number one, we have them built into our Genie Trip. So as you're browsing the Genie Trip, you'll see all the interesting points of interest in that area for that particular trip. Number two, as you start creating your own custom trip and going from point A to B to C and selecting your campgrounds, you can overlay it with a set of, of points of interest. Our commitment is to add more and more points of interest each release. And we plan on releasing, by the way, uh, new updates, because we are a startup, we can do this on a monthly basis. So very soon you're going to see what you see in the application today is kind of the framework and um, a proof of concept of how POIs will work in our system. Now we will start layering in all the different flavors of points of interest, whether it's, um, you know, entertainment related or amusement parks or Bucky's and uh, the truck stops and uh, museums and art centers and so sure. forth. So yes, you will see those layered in over time. Scott, who do you think would benefit the most from uh, from Adventure Genie? Probably anyone that wants to simplify the trip planning process. Um, today, we feel, and this is why we built it, it we, we feel that it's just too cumbersome. There are too many tools to use. And there's a lot of tools out there that are pretty darn good, by the way. I know you use them. I've used them. Everybody's using them. Some are really good at finding campgrounds. Some are really good at doing the route planning. Some are really great at the points of interest. We aim to be an all-in-one system so that you can do it all from one place. And we really anyone that wants to spend more time having fun camping and less time doing the planning to go on a camping trip. True. Um, and, yep. and the cost for all this for people, what's the cost to be a part of Adventure Genie? Um, our MSRP is $99.99 as a subscription service, $99.99 as a subscription service for the year. And uh, we do have an introductory offer, an even better offer for your listeners. If I can give out a code, may I do that? Sure. Yeah, okay. give them the code. <laughs> It is RV Lifestyle 60, 60, RV Lifestyle 60, and with that code, you'll get 60 bucks off. So effectively $40 for your first year of uh, Adventure Genie. It's great. And we will put uh, that link in the show notes and on, uh, on the, the description below, all that stuff, we'll send them. Well, congratulations. I think uh, the, the future with AI is uh, is both exciting and troublesome. And you have kind of, I think, picked the best parts of AI that can make our life and our travel in the RV world easier, uh, and yet not in an intrusive way that t sort of takes over, because we still have control. We will be showing uh, images on our YouTube version of the podcast, and we'll have a few of them interspersed in the show note podcast as well. Uh, Scott, thanks, and thanks for extending that uh, offer to our uh, our audience. I think that uh, uh, sixty percent off is a pretty good uh, pretty good incentive to sign up to okay. Adventure Genie, the first uh, one we have seen that is using AI to make RV trip planning easier. Scott Langle's been our guest. Scott, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Well, what do you think about AI and uh, RV trip planning? Well. What could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> a rogue computer? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows where you'd end up? Who knows where we're going to end up when we just go off on our own? But yeah. Two of us. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat. And we, we have links. You can follow it to uh, his uh, website and see how it all works. Uh, I think it holds a lot of promise. <laughs> and uh, it's, um, it's pretty nice. I did a, uh, a link a couple of weeks ago about how you can write a query to uh, with a chat GPT and how that actually... 
div divide a route for you and help you plan what to see along the route. Uh, Scott's uh, program and his algorithms are a little bit more sophisticated, but I have a feeling we're going to hear a lot more about AI and RV trip planning in the future. Who knows where this is all headed? <laughs> All right, when we come back, the RV news of the week. So please stay with us. Jennifer and I bought some land just west of Nashville, Tennessee, in a 5,300-acre estate, a beautiful collection of mountaintop properties called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. For us, it was the anecdote to crowded, expensive campgrounds and the end of worrying about reservations. These are big properties, 5 to 250 acres, and you can build a house, a cabin, outbuildings, or RV year-round starting at $79,900. Your property, your way, 100% ownership, and the scenery is breathtaking. You can landscape, garden, bring your pets, build what you want to. There's high-speed internet, and it is so private. It's a great place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations. Is ready whenever you want. This is the final phase now. They are selling these on May 20th by appointment. Five to 250 acre properties from $79,900. There's great financing and big discounts on multi-lot packages. For information, visit MyRVLand.com. That's MyRVLand.com. Welcome back, and now it's time for the RV News of the Week, and I've got the first story for you. All right, it's Memorial Day weekend. Planning to travel on Memorial Day? You're not alone. AAA projects 42.3 million Americans will travel 50 miles or more from home this upcoming Memorial Day weekend. That's a 7% increase from last year. And AAA expects this weekend to be the third busiest since 2000. And since Memorial Day weekend is traditionally seen as the official kickoff of summer, many say this is a sign of a busy travel season ahead. And Friday is expected to be the busiest day on the road. And AAA is saying if you must drive, do it in the morning or after 6 p.m. And the lightest travel day, they're saying, will be Saturday and Sunday. Aren't we traveling Saturday? We are. Yeah, and, and probably Sunday too, so yeah. good. We're, picking the, we're yeah. picking the best days. And Monday's always a busy day because everybody's coming back home. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go someplace, go where they are leaving and you can get <laughs> some peace and quiet. Have a great trip if you guys are doing some Memorial Day uh, planning. Hey, here's a fun story, and I have followed this over the last couple of years, and we'll put a link to their website and everything, but this is a, just a fun story. A 93-year-old grandma and her grandson have now completed their mission to visit all 63 uh, American national parks. Um, this woman and her grandson, they, they finished this quest. They started it back in 2015, and the last one they just visited was the National Park of the American Samoa in the South Pacific. Uh, again, they started this thing uh, eight years ago. The grandson said his grandma had a huge craving to travel, but she had never had the means to do it, so they started with tent camping. He imagine a 93-year-old grandma in a tent. Uh, at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, that was her first one, and from there it became a mission to visit all of them. Um, Grandma became so invigorated by these experiences that she started to look younger, as you'll find in, if you follow along with their story, which you'll find at rvlifestyle.com. Look under the podcast tab and scroll down the news of the week and you can uh, find this story. But man, that's, a, that's an awesome accomplishment. What a bucket list. I mean, what a great grandson she has. Certainly has a great grandson. Yep. And now for this story, are you one of those people that mosquitoes seem to swarm to? <laughs> no matter what you do, well, listen up. A new study in eye science shows the soap you use may attract the blood-sucking pests or distract them. So soap with floral scents seem to attract mosquitoes, and coconut-scented soaps decrease mosquitoes. Hmm. Okay. Um, so... I don't know. They have all these soaps that don't have any smell at all. I've yeah, seen those. Yeah. Organic stuff. And yeah. It really kind of stinks, but maybe it's mosquitoes don't like it either. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, hey, if you travel into Yellowstone National Park, they uh, want to remind you it's time to beware of the elk. Um, this is elk calving season, 
And that means elk are uh, more aggressive than they normally are, and they may even run towards tourists, kick them. We have seen them uh, attack cars mm -hmm. and do some serious damage. So the advice is uh, stay safe, stay alert, look around buildings, um, particularly around the Mammoth uh, Falls area there of, of National Park, because that's where they seem to hang out. Um, look for blind spots around trees. Don't sneak up on them. Uh, make sure an elk and her calf aren't there and, uh, and stay at least 25 feet away from elk. And remember, um, they can attack for no reason at all. They just, I think, get kind of feisty. You know what's coming up? Father's Day, and that certainly has become a big camping day. So now here's a story about Jellystone Parks. They're celebrating Father's Day at their campgrounds in some unique ways. Some parks are having Try Not to Laugh at the uh, Dad Jokes Contest, <laughs> Water War Games, everybody like that, Chocolate Pudding Eating Contest. I could do that. And a Burger Grilling Competition to celebrate. So camping is the way many families like to celebrate Father's Day, which this year is June 18th. And to help them celebrate, Jellystone Parks are announcing they are holding an all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast and the best dad body contest <laughs> after you know all the pancakes you're going to hold. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a, all right. Uh, Happy Father's Day coming up. Jellystone Parks. We, they are a lot of fun to stay oh, at. Oh, they are. Yeah. If you haven't stayed we'll, at one. We'll put a link at one we stayed at with our family a while ago. If you haven't been to one, you really need to go. They do a really good job. In fact, our one son was asking us, let's go back. Yeah. And we, uh, we got to get that on the calendar. We will. All right, we come back. The RV Tip of the Week and the RV App of the Week. One of the most exciting developments for RVs is happening out west in Arizona. Western Land and Ranches is selling five-acre high-elevation ranches just off the famous Route 66, the birthplace of the American road trip. And these are beautiful, secluded tracts of land surrounded by majestic mountain ranges with sweeping valley views. The high elevation is a unique microclimate as well, giving you cooler temperatures, green grasses, and tree cover, making it unique for desert property. The community is in the center of it all, close to the best of the West, Grand Canyon, Las Vegas, Lake Havasu, Lake Mead, Lake Mojave, the Colorado River, Flagstaff, Sedona, and Historic Williams. If you're tired of crowded RV parks and paying high fees for sites, well, ownership might be right for you. This incredible collection of mountaintop properties called Greenwood Ranches hit the market and it's selling out fast. There is no HOA. You can build a house, a cabin, outbuildings, or just RV. It's your property, your way, 100% ownership. Visit the website to get details and set up a showing, ArizonaRVLand.net. That's ArizonaRVLand.net. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Now it's time for the RV Tip of the Week from Certified RV Inspector Brenda of Queen Bee RV. Brenda's passion and focus is on educating RVers on how to care for their RVs, especially women RVers. And she's a regular contributor to the podcast, sharing her expertise with our entire audience. Here's Brenda, Queen Bee RV. If you are new to RVing and you shudder at the thought of dump day, I've got some helpful hints for you to conquer this camping rite of passage, and it's actually easier than you think. 
So let's start by talking about the different types of holding tanks. First, most RVs come with a black tank and a gray tank, one of each. Some of these bigger rigs will have multiple black and gray tanks, and then some rigs might have a combo black and gray tank. So the gray tank is the one that is collecting the contents from your sinks, the showers, the washing machine, the dishwasher, all that soapy water. And then the black tank is the one collecting the contents from the toilets. So let's talk about where you camp and how you decide where to make your reservations. Some RVers opt to have campsites with their own dedicated sewer drain line. They want sewer utilities there so they can dump the contents of black and gray at will throughout their stay. There are other campgrounds that only have a dump station, and that is one place where everybody lines up, typically on the day they're leaving the park, to offload the contents of their black and gray tanks. So plan accordingly. Now let's talk about some accessories that you need to maintain and operate your tank successfully. This sewer hose, I want you guys to think about replacing this at least once a year because it can get dry and cracked, and if it springs a leak, it is not at a good time. You're also gonna want some disposable gloves. I think it's a must. This attachment here, this elbow attachment, there's a clear one at the RV here and there's an opaque one down there at the uh, sewer drain. You can get clear or opaque. Lots of RVers love to have the clear and I'll tell you why during the steps in a moment. But that elbow helps to relieve the pressure on the end of the hose. You might want this sidewinder accessory this person has and that's in case gravity is working against you taking the contents downhill to the sewer drain line. And then on that end at the sewer drain, you're gonna have to probably use some type of adapter because all those sewer drain pipes vary in sizes. So if you have a donut or some type of adapter, just to make sure that you have a tight connection. That tight connection is so important because this thing can get away from you really easily. So let's talk about that age old question everybody wants to know, do I leave the tank valves opened or closed? So to maintain your tanks properly, they've got to have liquid in there. We don't want to dry out, especially that black tank. If you do, toilet paper and solids will dry out in there and cause a big clog and that's a huge mess and expensive to clean up. So on that note, keep the black tank valve closed until dump day. Now some RVers will go ahead and leave the gray tank valve open so that they can take showers and do dishes you know, as long as they want and not fill that gray tank up so quickly and have to dump it so often. However, one of my tank cleaning specialist friends said she recommends keeping both of them closed because that gray tank can get just as smelly and dried out. You'll just have to dump it more often. So let's talk about the steps on dump day. Number one, you're gonna connect the sewer hose at both the RV and at the drain pipe or at the dump station. Make sure those connections on that bayonet are super tight because once you open the valve, that water is gonna come rushing out with some surprising force and you will hear it, so don't be surprised. Next, and like I said, you might like this elbow attachment. That clear elbow will let you know when the contents are dumped from whichever tank you're dumping. So first, I open the black tank valve and let all those contents vacate into the sewer drain. Close that valve and next I'll do the gray tank valve and allow that soapy water to clean out the sewer hose. Close that valve. If you are leaving for the day, you might disconnect your sewer hose and use the hose that's at the dump station to give it one more rinse out and then store that sewer hose away from all other things that you don't want it to contaminate. If you're staying a while or if you have this option, you can do this at the dump station or at the campsite. If you have a black tank flush, that's the time to do it. Don't forget, do not walk away. If you turn on the black tank flush, don't walk away from it, especially if you have the termination valve closed because that thing can over fill and cause a big mess. So set yourself a timer and pay attention to it. So then the next thing that we do, the last thing is maintain those tanks. You want them in good health. And that actually means bacteria, good bacteria is inside those. So I want water in there flowing about so it doesn't get dry. And then we also will treat it with some type of specific tank treatment for RVs. I prefer a probiotic. There's all kinds of products out there. I send several gallons of water back down the sink for the gray tank and the toilet. You can fill the toilet and flush it, fill it, flush it, fill it, flush it. Do that at least three times. Sometimes I just fill up jugs, old milk jugs of water and pour them back down the toilet and the sink drain and then put that probiotic tank 
cleaner down in both the black tank and the gray tank. So I hope these tips were helpful and we'll see you next week on another RV Tip of the Week. Back to you, Mike and Jen. You know, I think we always think about the black tank, but we don't realize uh, the gray tank can get just as smelly and nasty as the black tank. Yep, good, good advice, Brenda. All right, it's time now for the RV app of the week taken from the pages of NewTravelTech.com. That's our sister blog that celebrates the many ways technology enhances the RV travel experience. And this, is, uh, this week's app is called um, Open Roads. It's part of a fuel saving program. We've been in it now for several years. Uh, and it saves 30 to 40 cents a gallon at places like uh, Love's and uh, Travel Centers of America. Now the deal is you've got to have a diesel vehicle and you've got to go up where the big semi trucks go to get it, which is, I think, a benefit because you can also fill up with uh, DEF at that, those pumps. Uh, there are no uh, plans with this right now for gas vehicles. So you've got to have diesel, diesel haulers, diesel pushers, uh, diesel trucks. Um, but uh, it's, it's a great program. We'll put a link to it. It's called Open Roads. And uh, there's talk that someday it may apply to gas as well, but right now uh, it's for diesel. For those of you who use a diesel vehicle, either as a motorhome or as a tow vehicle. When we come back, we have the RV questions of the week. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries, they allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back. It's time now for the RV questions of the week. And you, you probably hear there's doing some lawn maintenance out around us here uh, on our Michigan property. So uh, we can't do much about that, but um, they're working hard out in the sun while we are in a nice air conditioned studio <laughs> under bright lights. <laughs> I'll still take the sun. All right, first question, you got it. Okay, the first one is, we have sold our condo and are not finding the next sticks and bricks. We will be going full time until then. In addition to Florida, it looks like the uh, best thing is any time mailbox to make mail seamless, no matter where we are throughout the year. Any thoughts? And that's from, you know who? Renee and Mike. Renee and Mike, two of our uh, of our friends uh, mm -hmm. from Michigan, and we last saw them down in Florida. Yes. Uh, well, if you are away from your home uh, and your local post office for extended periods of time, dealing with your mail is a, a big deal. There's lots of mail forwarding companies that people have used and used throughout the year. Uh, the one that we have used that have been we've been pretty happy with is Anytime Mailbox. They're on our partners page at rvlifestyle.com. Look for the partners tab and click it and you can learn more about it. But uh, there are several other companies like that out there. And you can also do one through the Escapees RV Club if you want to try that, if you're a member of Escapees. But it's pretty neat. They gather your mail. It all gets sent to them. And they scan it. They show you what's in it. They can open it if you'd like. They can forward it to you like if you like. Or they could shred it with you like. Um, you know, the other tip we have for anybody who's going to be uh, on the road for extended periods of time is do everything you can uh, electronically. Pay all your bills, deposit your checks uh, that you get. Um, have your checks, you know, deposited in automatic fashion so you don't even have to deal with, you know, taking them to the bank. Uh, lots of ways to do it, but uh, having a mail forwarding service is a pretty big plus. Okay, here's one for you that uh, comes from Becky, and Becky asked this uh, through our Facebook page, our RV Lifestyle Facebook page, and she wanted to know what's the name of the tabletop grill that she has seen us using, and I don't know which one she saw, because we actually have two. We have two. So uh, what we have in our leisure travel van is a Coleman. It's uh, just a plain little Coleman. 
grill, and propane then, gas and that then, we use. And then for our fifth wheel, we just got a black stone grill, a griddle, really. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's and much that, larger. It's much larger. It's very heavy. Uh, and we like that so much, we just bought a great big one for our home, our sticks and bricks home as well. So um, it depends on what RV we're in. It's a Coleman grill, and we've had... Well, we have, we've gone through two of them over 11 years in our motorhomes. Yeah, the propane Coleman's, we've gone through several of those. Yeah, I guess this is our third one. I think yeah. it is our third one. Mm-hmm. And, and we've just, you know, when it, it gets, you know, they both run off those little green propane bottles. We could, we could hook it up with an adapter to the propane system on the RV, but, mm-hmm. you know, those little things are just as easy, so... We use those. Uh, Blackstone gr- uh, griddle for our fifth wheel and the Coleman for our RV, our, our motorhome. You know, I think I've never encouraged you to hook it up to our big propane tank because I'm always a little paranoid about using up all that propane, and I shouldn't be. I think no. we should venture out <laughs> and, uh, for I'd the say- sake of the environment, not use those little green cans and hook up to the big propane tank. I think pro- we'll probably hear from a lot of people who were going to, about ready to criticize me for using those little green cans, and you just saved me from the criticism. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's what we, we should, should be do. using, but my paranoia has been... That we'd run that out. That we'd run out of propane. Yeah. But I sh- propane lasts. A, we don't use a lot of propane in the wintertime. You know, camping we do, but not in um, not in the summer. Very little. I usually fill it up in the start of the summer. And if and and the only the most use we get is when we're driving down the road with you know when we stop and we run the refrigerator off propane. But that's about it. Or for boondocking, we run the fridge off propane. But it lasts a long time. Or if we're camping in the winter while our house is being... Oh, and we ran out of propane. Yeah, I don't want to have to talk about <laughs> we that. We don't want to remember no, that. I did. That, was, that was all operator error. This <laughs> operator. All right, hey, we would love to hear from you. If you've got a question or a comment about anything you heard in the podcast today, just use our personal email, and that is mikeandjen at rvlifestyle.com. Uh, we'll be back next week with more. And if you're going out Memorial Day camping, happy Memorial Day. Happy trails. Happy trails.